Hi guys, um, I'm Mr. Watson, I'm a teacher from England, and um, I was just joining the Read Around America, which is Mr. Robertson, and unfortunately I made a bit of a mess up with the PST, the GMT time conversion, I actually can't do one live, which I was really upset about, but I really want to share a story with you, uh, and help you celebrate the Read Around America and Dr. City's birthday, so I want to pre-record live, and hopefully it'll give you a bit of a sense to talk about some of the things I'm going to share with you. It's called The Water Tale by Gary Crew. And Gary Crew is an Australian author, and it's sort of a graphic novel. Lots and lots of pictures, not so many words, but both parts are really important to the story. So let's have a look, and hopefully by the end of it, I'll see the interest to share something to talk about. So I'm going to whip this up now, and I'm going to share. This is the guys. Hopefully, you'll see the right stuff. You should be seeing this right now. Um, let's have a look. Nobody impressed me could remember when the water tower was built, or who had built it. But there it stood on Shooter's Hill, its iron legs rusted, its egg-shaped tank warped and leaking, casting a long, dark shadow across the valley, across Preston itself. Afternoon, Spike Trotter, like Bobby D'Angelo, at the service station, and together they went up to the tower for a swim. Spike led the way as usual. My mother says it's dangerous up there, he said, but it's worth it, eh? Bobber puffed on behind. I couldn't have cared less where he went. At this time, Spike stopped to look down at the sweltering town. Suckers, he grinned as he headed to the tower. Late summer, security fence had kept trespassers out, but now the metal posts were twisted and flattened, and the wire lay coiled on the ground. You reckon Vandal's done that? Bob asked, covering his breath. But Spike was already up on the top. Hurry up! He yelled, throwing open the exit hat. It's scorching up here! He pulled off his shirt over his head and dropped his shorts and clambered down into the tank. It's dark in summer. The dark's got a sort of colour, Bobby said, squatting on the bottom rung of the ladder. It's sort of green, like moss like slimy dead moss spike didn't answer except for the ghostly way we kept up with the fun of hearing the echo he might not have been there at all spike what he called spikey still no answer so bubble whistled for a while and then splashed a bit but only up to his knees he didn't particularly like the water he wasn't keen on slipping down there he didn't his nose to and from time to time he glanced up at the shaft of sunlight hanging in from the hole in the roof At last, Bubba called, Spikey, I'm going up now, I'm going to get dressed. He guessed that Spike was somewhere beneath him in the water with Eddie and swirled.
Bubba stepped out of the top of the tank. The wind was hot, the, ter the glare terrible. Blinking and squinting, he looked back to the town, the blank, the far side of the tank. And there it hung, caught on the head of a valve. Maybe I should have stayed down, muttered to himself, tiptoeing across the burning metal. With a towel wrapped round him, he looked at his clothes. Spikes were there, wedged beneath the hatch. In short, he saw his shirt flapping at the top of the ladder, but where were his shorts? He turned around and around, and said, he dropped to his hands and knees and crept to the side of the tank, yelping with each movement as the burning surface scout seared. He peered over the side. Nothing. He limped back into the hatch, calling, Hey, are my pants down there? What? In response, he repeated the question, then waited, standing on his crumpled shirt, keeping his towel tightly wrapped round him. Spike dripping head suddenly appeared. Nope. He imported nothing down there but water. And he pulled himself free of the dark. Bubba looked about him again. And they've blown away. That's what's happened, I bet. Spike laughed. Doesn't matter, he said, shaking himself off and reaching for his clothes. You've got your towel going in there. Bubba shook his head. No way. If my mother finds out I've lost my pants, I'm dead. They looked at each other. They knew that this was true. Mum and Angelo could land a wallop like no one else in town. I'll go back, Spike volunteered. I'll run the whole way. I'll sneak in through your bedroom window and get another pair. Some drawer of your dresser, right? But the nodded. I'll wait here. I'll get back down out of the sun, will you? It'll be long. Spike was already on the ladder. I didn't win the cross country for nothing, did I? I'll run. His last words were lost in the wind. I'll be alright. But when he looked, the bottom rung was a long way from the light, and the water seemed darker, so he stopped halfway and waited. All about him, the tower creaked and groaned. It's the heat, he reasoned. The heat expanding the metal. There was a smell. It's the algae, rotten, festering. The water eddied and swirled. It's the wind, shifting the tower. It's old, it's rickety. But he was frightened, very frightened. And rung by rung, so as not to shake the ladder and not to disturb anything, he crept upwards towards the sun. Bubba reached the top. He lifted himself out and squatted for a moment, catching his breath and covering his heart. I can't have this stupid thing, he said. I'll go and wait down in the bushes. So he did. He tightened the towel around his waist and climbed down the outside of the ladder and hopped into the burning earth for the patchy shade of grey leaf bush. I'll be safer here, he thought, but from what exactly he couldn't imagine. The sun found him wherever he went, starting blisters on his skin. The hot wind burned his chin. How much longer? He wondered, where will he come? Then something moved, way up at the top of the tower, something that I couldn't quite make out. Spike, what the call is, is that you? Good answer. Spike, getting up. Spikey. Spike returned, calling and waving his shorts. Bubba stuck his head straight out of the tank. Oh, boy, he said, dressing himself. If I stand there, there longer, a minute longer, I reckon I'd be dissolved. 
Oh, was great. I had the best swim. I told myself to lie on the bottom. I could do it to the count of 120. No line. Two minutes. Boy, that was good. Bike's eyes narrowed. Not a bubble at all. Go on then, he said, shooting in. Shows your fingers then. Shows the water wrinkles. Come on. But turned away. Nah, no time now, he answered. My mother will be worried. You know what a worry she is. She'll be scared something's happened to me, won't she? He shook the hatch with a foot. Deep in the tank, the water eddied and swirled. Um, if you watch that carefully, I oh, love that story, it's one of my favourites. The words in the pictures tell the two sides of the story. One side tells Bubba's story, and one side tells Spike's story. And they're not quite the same. And one thing this book does is leave lots and lots and lots of really unanswered questions. I just hope it does. It does with me, and it has done with all the classes that I've shown you. Um, and I've put a link in the description to a sheet with uh, quite a few of those sort of what if questions. Sort of questions that children have asked me are things like, well, you know, the security cut, the security fence hadn't been broken down. It happened down in the store, or um, what if Spike hadn't off to go and fetch Bubba another kind of shot? What would have happened differently? Um, what happens next? Does it end? Does it end? Is there a next part? And that's what I love about the story is that you can do so much with it afterwards. You can talk about it, you can think about it look at the pictures really look closely at the pictures and see if you can spot anything in them that turns up quite often there's all sorts of things there and every time i shared that book or that presentation with a class of children they've always found something different so have a look have a think have a chat about it and well i hope you found it interesting i hope you found it exciting i hope it does generate some sort of discussion um use the google docket that's there with those questions on add some of your own responses and you know i'm sure if so, so inclined we can maybe get together sometime have a chat and see what sort of ideas you came up with and what you thought but thanks very much for watching i shall leave you now i've done my stint and uh, good luck with the rest of it take care guys see you.